По дорогам нашей матушки России Жмут Столыпин и топная судьба Столько судеб заточили, погубили Вдоль дорог Hai China, is only a stone's throw away from Blagoveshensk in Russia. But the Amur River is a heavily guarded border. In the 1960s, the two communist states fought over this border, and disagreements continued until the 1990s. The border disputes were settled last year, but bad feelings remain. Especially on the Russian side. This is because Hai He is a gateway for hundreds of thousands of Chinese traveling into Russia's Far East. Official figures claim that at least one million people speak Chinese here. Some Russians believe that there are several million. These men come from Shandong to await their journey. In Russia, they can earn twice as much as at home. Still, people are fearful. Moscow recently halted the building of a bridge over the Amo River. The first pillar stands here alone at Hai He. Because of this, workers try to cross the river. But if the ice is not thick enough for trucks, cargo will have to be airlifted. Many suspect that the blockades are a cheap ploy to improve business for Russian and Chinese carriers. Several times a day they transport buyers to Haihe. Most are Russian and Chinese guest workers importing Chinese goods to Blagoveshink. Unlike on the Chinese side of the border, where everything is written in Russian, here there is nothing to signal the way to the market. In Blagoveshensk, we can only shoot with a hidden camera. The mood in the so-called Chinese market is not good. Since last year, every Chinese trader has to employ a Russian coordinator. Even to have a booth here is near impossible for the Chinese. It is safe to assume that most of the goods offered here are from China. Chinese traders believe that the Russian economy is failing and that Russians need Chinese goods. Our excursion to the market of Blagoveshensk has already ended. Our cameras can come out of hiding. It is not only on this side of the border that relations are strained. We travel to southeast China to find out how the Chinese feel about doing business with Russia. If their commercial relationship continues to flourish, it will soon be socially acceptable for Russian tourists to stay in five-star hotels in China. Sufin Hei lives by the Russian quarter. Buzviz travels from the relatively near Vladivostok for her weekly shopping. One Russian trading here is Nadia She. Selling children's clothes, she is barely able to earn a living. Business is too bad for me to even provide for my children with an adequate home, she says. It is difficult to tell where Russian resentment will lead. For many Russians, the Chinese are simply competition, and as a result of this, they are currently importing Chinese products to Russia. 30 kilos of good per person can be sold here. We are very popular with the Chinese, said Nadia She. Although this place is difficult to reach, Nadia She is never alone when trading on the road at night. Many Russians in the Chinese city of Suhinche have been attacked or even killed. This type of violence occurs again and again. The vice mayor blames the attacks on alcohol 
and describes the crimes as normal criminal activity. For the Chinese citizens in Russia, however, the risks are even higher. The motivation behind these killings is clear. Chinese raw materials are needed by the Russians. Timber for Russia has to travel all the way from Sufenhe in China. The timber business there is firmly in the hands of criminals, says historian from Vladivostok, who specialises in the tense relationship between China and Russia. Diese Beziehungen sind ganz anders auf regionaler und zentraler Ebene. Das, was Moskau und Peking untereinander machen, was sie gemeinsam machen, das davon wissen ganz wenig die Russen, die in Vladivostok leben. Aber auch Moskau und Peking können nicht die Prozesse kontrollieren, welche hier an der Grenze verlaufen. People on both sides of the border have more in common than they think. They are all citizens of giant empires, both centralized, both tightly managed. In both of these countries, the center of operations does not understand what is happening on the periphery. Moscow and Beijing have proclaimed a new era of friendship, but here in the borderlands, those on both sides remain suspicious.